Okay. That, so she's in this position, she's out the back, and as she's coming around, it's relocating. So probably what she feels as a dislocation when she's swimming or throwing is a relocation, going from a posterior um, back into the joint. Okay. Um, so we've looked, and then looking um, from the front, mm, cute as can be, but I'm not seeing any significant dysfunction except her hands are a little bit forward. Okay. Um, so that's basically my standing exam, but I, I, I have my diagnosis. I had my diagnosis from the history um, because she said she was coming out, and with backstroke, it's probably coming out the back and going back into the front. We know she's got a scapular thoracic problem. The one thing I would do is see, can I change that with a scapular assistance test? So let's, let me have you turn this way. And um, did you have any discomfort as you brought your arm up? Yeah, like when it's all the way up. OK, so let's see if we can change that. So the scapular assistance test um, is, I'll put her where she belongs, and then go ahead and do it again. Bring it forward, up, and overhead. Any change? OK. Now bring it down. And now let's, let's test her rotator cuff strength with and without scapular positioning. Push out against my hands. Okay. External rotators are OK. And in this position, I'm a thumb up guy, not a thumb down guy. Push up. OK. Pretty good strength. Now are you seeing her recruiting stuff back here? OK. So let me turn you this way and push up. Okay, so she's using her scapulothoracic musculature and her rotator cuff strength is really quite good. Now, the mo do the, the motion where, that you felt, where you felt it coming out. Okay, let's see if we can change that with a scapular assistance. If so, if I put her scapula where, where I want it, and there are, there are a number of ways of doing that. If I just hold her here, I've got control of her coracoid and go ahead and do it again. Okay. So it's, she's got scapular thoracic issues. The problem is a glenohumeral joint problem. And her scapular dysfunction, to me, is what I call an, a distally based. It's coming from the joint. Distally based is SC, AC, or glenohumeral joint, kicking back and shutting off the serratus anterior and lower trap. Okay. Um, so come on and have a seat. And this part you can do either sitting or standing. Slide over towards me a little bit. And are we good on the screen? Okay, so then the choreography of my exam now is either with the patient sitting or standing, I'll do, just relax, for, is that uncomfortable? Horizontal adduction, looking for AC joint, not necessarily in, in this patient. Then I'll bend, flex the elbow, bend your elbow, please. Okay, you okay? Okay, and push up. That's Whipple's test for anterior supraspinatus function. Then I'll come to here. And in her case, but not in every case, just relax your arm, do a posterior apprehension test. This is a struggle up here with, for this. She's not, she doesn't like this at all, so I won't do it anymore. Go to O'Brien's test, thumb down, 20 degrees horizontal adduction, have her push up, go palm up. There's a little pop when I did that. Push up here. And then from there, I come into abduction, and I'll do, I don't do speeds test up front because I find it confusing with, um, with O'Brien's test. So I'll have the patient, and the, the history that I hear in biceps uh, problems is the patient had a hurt reaching to the back seat of the car. So I put them basically in that position, have them abduct in, in pronation, push up, and now supinate, and then I think I'm putting the biceps under maximum load and have them go there. From there, I just go to the 90-90 position and do the 90-90 impingement sign, push forward, pain, any pain there? Come down and do Hawkins impingement sign, and then I'll, in this, is that painful? Okay. And then I'll put them here, put my hand here, and just rot rotate your, your arm without hurting me, okay. and feel for crepitus. That's my, that's my, my seated exam. Um, and then I'll have the patient lie supine. Um, let me get you standing up for a moment. I'm going to just reposition the table. Matt, just give me a hand here. And see if we can line this up with the camera. It'd come this way, if you would. OK. 
have a, ha, lie down with your head up this way. And we'll take a look at, at her pecs. On your back, please, with your head up a little bit higher. Don't make the old man reach. OK. OK. And the observation that we made before is that both scapulae were anteriorly tilted, and that's pretty much confirmed here. Um, our angle is not quite right. Um, can we turn a little more? No. You want me to get up? Nope. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Great. OK, hands back here. So what I'm, what I'm seeing is <clears throat> that there's a lot of space here on both sides. So <clears throat> to be a purist, you, you roll towels un under the elbow, because otherwise the, the humeral head's going to go anteriorly if they're in this position. But if I push down on her scapula, her arm comes up, which is an indication of pec minor tightness. So that's on the non-dominant non side, or asymptomatic side. And the same thing is going to be the case here. But it's actually a little bit more. OK, so from there, I would go to um, look at what, is, what's, what are her lats like. So you make sure that her humeral head is centered in the glenoid. Get your finger on the lats and come up. And she's actually pretty good. She's actually excellent. And then you test, um, test serratus anterior as well in that position. She's not winging very much. That's what I would expect from a swimmer water polo player. And then from there, slide over towards me a little bit. This is where I've checked her range of motion and elevation, which is fine. Here's her external rotation with her scapula fixed. And then, let me see if I can do this. Um, holding her coracoid, her internal rotation is OK. And the way I've been doing that late, recently is taking the patient down as far as they want to go and then pushing the scapula where I want it to be and letting it go into the position it should be in so I don't have to worry which way I'm going. From there, I'll do anterior apprehension and then, OK, push forward, pain, OK. And then if that was positive, I would do apprehension suppression, pushing back. But the other thing that I would do in her because of the history in the exam is a reverse apprehension suppression. So. Her, her problem is that, um, let, me, let me change that. 